It's 2 p.m. on Friday, and you know what that means. It's time for another exciting Taxi Music Quarantini Happy Hour. Woohoo! And thank you, fake audience. Thank you, fake band. Let's see if you guys in the chat room are getting me. Hello. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I clicked the button, but I didn't see the usual chain of events uh, happening on my screen. So you guys can hear me okay and see me? Give me plus one so I know that I'm good to go. Yep, got me. Okay. All right. So it's Friday. We made it through another week. How's that? Um, let's see. I've got a bunch of interesting stuff today. Um, oh, I want to start out today. <clears throat> excuse me, I need to clear my throat. I want to start out today uh, saying hello to everybody in the chat room. For starters, Martin, Martin Gravel, uh, Dan Weber, Darren Fletcher, Clay Bearden, Jay Williams. Uh, Alan Hall says, quarantinis for everybody. Thank you. Uh, would love to join you for one. Um, Let's see, Christopher Jones, Peter Rahill. So uh, I know it takes a minute for people to show up, um, but I've got to say the turnout was a little bit on the wimpy side yesterday. Are you guys really? Adriana, how are you? Uh, are you guys doing a good job of spreading the word? Um, you know, after the show is over, uh, send out links to your friends on social, on Facebook, um, Twitter, Instagram, what have you, um, push it out there. I, I want to get the audience big enough so we can get some free stuff to give away. Hello, Charles Robichard, George Georges, Jennifer Bowman, Wind Chimes Music <laughs> it says, I'm finally here when it's live. That makes two of us. Um, yeah, Peter Rahill says, some folks are still working from home at this hour. Honestly, I know, you know, we decided to do it at two o'clock, figuring that our friends in Europe would have a shot at joining us. Um, Bonzo, I, I saw your message. Can we get Cliff Martinez on the show? Frankly, if I'm going to do a show with Cliff Martinez, which I'd love to do, I love his work, um, I would much rather do a live taxi TV, a 90 minute show with him from his studio rather than uh, doing him you know, on, on this thing, but uh, I will consider that for the future because his work is incredible. Uh, while we're on the subject of Cliff Martinez and people who score, um, I want to talk about, we are starting to see more and more listings coming in where people are looking for stuff for the anticipated shows that are inevitably going to hit television and movie theaters. Um, stuff about this whole experience, this shared global experience we're all going through um, with sadly people dying and people getting infected. Um, I mean, you know, one of the, the better stories, it's sad and happy at the same time, the healthcare professionals. Wow. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the clips or not of some of the people at the New York hospitals in particular being interviewed where you know, maybe a nurse has five or six patients that are near death that that particular nurse is dealing with, and um, they can't even get a doctor to respond because the doctors are also overwhelmed, um, and they're working crazy hours. Um, they're going home. Uh, I've heard several stories now of healthcare professionals that are going home and sleeping in their garages and their basements so that they don't get anywhere near their families because they know that the probability of they themselves getting the virus just from being around that many sick people is pretty high, so they don't want to bring the germs home and infect their families, which is certainly understandable. Um, I don't know that we will ever be able to thank the healthcare community in a big enough way, but... Um, Dan Weber says it's his dad's birthday today. Who else saying happy birthday? Uh, 
I see. Happy birthday, A.N. I don't know who A.N. is. Um, uh, it's also uh, one of our staff members' birthdays today. Um, Tom from our A&R department, it's his birthday today. I think he's like 79 years old. I'm kidding. He's much younger than that. Anyway, if you're watching the show, Tom, happy birthday. Um, so yeah, those shows, the inevitable requests for music, uh, they're already starting to to reach out to us. We're doing some proactive stuff, reaching out to them as well. And uh, so my advice for all of you, whether you've seen the listings or not yet, by the way, if you're not a Taxi member and you're watching this, go to taxi.com, click on the big red button on our site, um, on the homepage of the site, get on our email list and start looking at the requests that are coming in because um, you're going to see plenty of them for this specific thing. And the two things that I anticipate they're going to be asking for and we're starting to see um, are instrumentals, um, tension drones. Uh, check out any of the stuff by Trent Reznor and Attica Ross that they do together. Um, Cliff Martinez, um, some of you staff said Junkie XL er earlier today. Um, the stuff is like droney tension underscore, ambient drone tension underscore, with some sound design elements thrown in. Remember, the music is never the star of the scene. The dialogue, the actors are the stars. The music supports the emotion. So make people sweat, make them anxious, make them nervous, make them depressed, make them freaked out. Just don't make your, they are not looking for composer of the year. They're looking for music that just makes that emotion even deeper when you're watching the scene. It could literally just be a couple of instruments, but work really hard on your, like your droney sounds, you know, don't just use stock stuff that everybody else is going to use, doctor it up a little bit, make it interesting. Um, oh, if you want to uh, bone up on that stuff, um, what's the, oh, Vice. I think I mentioned this the other day. I'm going to mention it again. Uh, watch any of the Vice videos that are about depressing subjects on, uh, if you've got like HBO Go or um, could pull it up, I'm sure, on YouTube. Uh, watch the, the reporting by Vice where they go into like a scary country or they uncover something horrible. They've always got really good contemporary sounding drones. I, I know that it sounds weird to say that a drone or underscore could be contemporary, but it is. Um, and what makes it contemporary, I think, are, are the synth sounds that get used with it. You could combine those with like a cello pad or, you know, a regular just like full on string pad, but keep things simple, um, uncomplicated, very little movement. Um, it's more about the chords. It's more about the textures of the sounds and it's all about the emotion. So there you go on the instrumental stuff on songs. What are they going to need? What are the scenes going to be? The scenes going to be unsuspecting families hearing about it on the news and going, oh, wow, there's a virus out there. Oh, look at that. A lot of people in China have it. Oh, my gosh, it's spreading around the world. Oh, the horror. It's become a pandemic. So what are all the different types of songs that are going to play for scenes like this? Um, eventually, they're in the, you know, in the scripts, there will be uh, moments of hope. So songs about hope with universal lyrics, not, I hope this virus ends soon. We all do, of course, but no, you know, um, hope uh, that we'll get through this, um, hope that we'll get through this together. Um, songs about heroes, because inevitably there are going to be tons of, of hero stories about healthcare workers and first responders. Uh, light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, again, you don't have to use the specific phrase, but universal lyrics that express that there is going to be light at the end of the tunnel. Um, please don't submit a bunch of songs with the words light at the end of the tunnel. That would just be too easy. Um, introspection, 
Um, you know, you've got plenty of times, you've got scenes with people, nothing to do, and they're thinking about their life, uh, their family, their friends, um, uh, their appreciation of having a home that is their shelter, that's keeping out all that bad stuff from the outside world. They're protected in their cocoon. Um, togetherness for scenes with families getting through it together, families and friends getting through it together. Um, songs about being alone. Songs about coming together. Songs about a brighter day. There you go. Um, Jay Williams production says way ahead of you, Michael at a guy at a boy at a girl. No, you're a boy. Um, let's see other stuff on my list. Okay. If you're working really, really hard and many of you probably are working remotely from your homes, um, and you need a quick pick me up. <laughs> there you go. I know it looks like a bag of baby dinosaur eggs, but actually <clears throat> I got some of it stuck in my throat right now. These little gems are Trader Joe's mm, chocolate covered coffee beans. Some are chocolate, some are mocha. I don't know what that one is. White chocolate with a little dot on it. No. Oh, bottom line is not jelly beans. Nope. Chocolate covered coffee beans. Let me tell you. <laughs> These things are so good. <laughs> Amanda says, OMG, Michael, I'm so jealous. Believe me, I'm a little worried about having some sort of, uh, you know, like a heart issue <laughs> from eating too many of these during the show. <clears throat> Taxi boss kicks the bucket during an episode. <laughs> some people will be... <laughs> we finally finished them off. Yeah, there you go. Trader Joe's, an Uber ride from the Westin Hotel where we hold the road rally. By the way, I want to talk about the road rally here for a second. Um, we are still on for the road rally, pending you know the outcome of all this, but uh, we are confirmed with the hotel. Um, the dates, I believe, uh, Ariana, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the dates this year are November 5th through the 8th. For those of you who are not taxi members who've never, or maybe taxi members who've never been to a road rally, it is a conference that every single taxi member gets two free tickets to. It's a world-class event. It is approximately 2,500 singers, songwriters, artists, composers, songwriter. No, oh, I said that already. Uh, from all over the world, literally from all over the world. So we are really, really hoping that all this uh, virus stuff is gonzo by then and it's not going to be an issue um i will say after 9 11 two months later we had a full turnout for the road rally i was very proud of our members um anyway just mark your calendars now for those of you who have never been to one it's a, a ballroom that holds a thousand people that we do panels anything from listening panels with um, music supervisors um publishers, film and TV specific publishers, also known as music library owners. Um, let's see, what else? Um, songwriting classes. We do about 75 to 90 breakout classes. We do 16 panels throughout the course of the weekend. We do about 75 to 90 different classes, anything you can think of from marketing, um, social media, uh, songwriting, um, just anything and everything you can think of, engineering, production. We have great people that uh, do, do the classes. Um, everybody loves them. I'm not just saying that. It, it's uh, plus ones in the, in the chat room if you guys agree. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, oh, we do um, meet and greet luncheons where we have 30 tables of 10 people each with a mentor at each table and every 15 minutes we rotate the mentors around so you could meet an artist manager you could meet a film and tv music supervisor you could meet a publisher you could meet a publicist anybody whose title has a p a u and a b in it 
you're going to meet at the meet and greet luncheon. Um, and probably the most popular thing that we offer there that a lot of deals come out of, uh, it surprises me every year. We do one-to-one -one mentoring sessions. And unlike some other conventions that charge you for that, it's totally free. Like the entire convention is free with the exception of luncheons because we have to pay the hotel for the food. Uh, but the one-to-one -one mentoring it's amazing who you can sit down with for 15 minutes. You can play them a song. You can ask them for advice. You can get feedback. Um, anyway, there you go. All that good stuff. Uh, I see Dean Crepain is in the house. You know what? I was going to mention your book in a couple of minutes, but as long as you're in the book, in the book, in the chat room, there we go. Demystifying the Genre um, by Dean Crepain. It's a must-have book for anybody that wants to do cues for film and television. This is it right there. There is no greater resource than that skinny little book right there because you can actually listen to Dean's cues that he writes about in the book. Um, great stuff. Also, maybe you should read this one first. Man, it's hard to operate in reverse. Demystifying the Cue, also by Dean Crepain. He's tall. He's good looking. He's charming. He's talented. And he's a damn good author because he writes like he talks, which is, in short, easy to understand sentences. And he's got a pretty darn good sense of humor and occasionally gives up a recipe for some of the great stuff that he cooks at his house. Um, all right. So that is all that. I want to give you guys a little treat now. I am going to call a taxi member who has become a friend. Um, he does trailers, film trailers, TV promo trailers. Um, where's his number? There it is. Hello? Wow, you picked up on the first ring. You're like Speedy Gonzalez. That's right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Mr. Randon Purcell. <laughs> <laughs> they love you, Randon. So, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've been doing too many, too many projects around my house, like construction type projects lately, because I was watching you here on YouTube and, uh, I, I couldn't help but focus back on the trim around your doorway. I was like, what a damn nice job they did on that trim. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm supposed to be thinking about music. You mean but, you the, know. that doorway, the front door, all the way in the yeah, back? Yeah, the, the little side door behind you. It's got this nice archway. And oh, okay, it yeah. really nice, and I was just admiring that. Cool. You know, everybody's been talking about the, uh, the chandelier that hangs in our foyer, which I'm tickled pink about because we ordered the thing about – three months ago and the first it's big it's 48 inches across and when it first came in it was actually damaged some of the little lights were bent over and the people uh -huh. at uh, allmodern.com were nice enough to replace it and send a second one and uh when the day the electrician came to hang that thing up myself my wife and the electrician all looked at each other and went holy crap that thing is really big <laughs> but it works it's not like our house yeah, is awesome all Thank you. It's not like the house is all that big, but the foyer has a nice high ceiling and we wanted to kind of make a statement there. So it worked. I'm tickled it that does. people notice it and uh, many have commented that I have a halo. <laughs> I was going to say, it also looks like you've got a halo. I, there we go. <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was your actual halo or a chandelier, but I'm <laughs> glad you clarified that. It's a chandelier. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, St. Michael is not coming to a, a, a screen near you anytime soon. So, uh, so the reason that I called Randon today is that he is going to be our guest on Monday's Taxi TV. Um, we are, in fact, going to do a split screen remote. Uh, we experimented with it yesterday. Um, Ariana and Bria were on video chat with me, coaching me through all the things I had to click and drag and expand and blah, 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 blah. And we seem to have it worked out. Um, Randon had a great connection, so everything is looking really good for this show on Monday. And I'm really excited because a lot of people 
want to participate in, in making music for trailers, but there's a bad influence out there, and it's called your family, your friends. You get a new, you know, string library, and you make a pretty triad chord, and they go, oh, man, that sounds awesome. You should score movies. You should do trailers. <laughs> And, and there's just so much more to it. It's very much its own thing. It's really not related at all to doing, you know, like um, cues that would end up in reality shows, that sort of thing. So, For sure. um, yeah, Monday show, I'm going to have Randon explain what cues are, what their purpose is, kind of the mindset that you go into it with, um, some of the tools that he uses by the way there's a thing called uh trailer structure it's like a three act structure sometimes a fourth act is thrown in there as well um and he will explain that to you um randon i know i didn't hit you with any of these questions up you know before this phone call but just <laughs> as a little tease for everybody can you give us an example of kind of like misconceptions people might have about trailers and then what the opposite, you know, what the reality is? Um, sure. Yeah. You know, I think honestly, one big one that I hear a lot is that, um, and you kind of briefly touched on that is that, uh, they almost look at it as a mini two and a half minute movie score as opposed to a trailer. And it's, it's very different because a uh, movie score is generally going to be highly musical, very thematic. Um, you know, it, it's trying to deliver a, a message through the music more than more than trailer music is where where trailer music does have emotion to it and everything. But it's it's all about selling something. Right. I mean, it's it's advertising. And so it's in a movie with a with a score. um it's driving that emotion. It's it's matching up to the actors and all of that. Whereas a trailer, it's kind of like a TV cue where it needs to be uh, subtle enough to let other things layer on top of it, like the dialogue. Your music's going to get chopped up like you wouldn't believe by the editors. Um, so you know, don't don't try to write some big beautiful theme. Um, it all has to be be able to be chopped up. You don't want big string lines running through it and trying to trying to do a lord of the rings type of you know <laughs> like a uh, big theme because um, it just doesn't work um it's just not what trailers do it's 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 very much like tv spots where you got to get in and out help deliver the message and not uh not try to overtake it with music could you um tell us what the three or sometimes four acts in a trailer are yeah, yeah, and you know, these days, the fourth act is almost not optional. Most of the time, I, I almost always get asked for for fourth acts. Okay. Um, so first act is your intro, um, kind of a, a toned down intro. You watch any trailer, you'll hear it. There's hardly anything going on. And what's little going? Little noises, little drones. You what, know, what's going on picture wise? during that intro yeah, and how long usually is it? there's a lot more dialogue going on it's going to have that that scenes from the movie where the actors are actually speaking and talking or you know that that awesome trailer voice guy is going to be there uh in a, introducing the film <laughs> in a world yeah exactly <laughs> in a world where in there was a, a pandemic crazy. <laughs> right exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah i think we we are all familiar with that and there's just not a lot of music going on. There's some little rumbling and there's some little noises and little accents, but um, yeah, not a whole lot. So there's your there's your intro, uh, which then kind of builds and usually there's a stop and then it comes back in into act two, which is slightly bigger, probably introducing some rhythm, um, some percussion and, and rhythm in your strings and stuff, maybe some spiccato. Uh, you know, ostinato patterns in your strings, that type of thing. Um, but still not going too big because they actually do usually have quite a lot of dialogue um, and and sound effects and stuff going on during that scene as well. Do they have a um, name for what that second act scene is? is it like the explanatory part or something? I'm sorry, what was that? Do they have a name for it? Uh, oh, you know, I don't know. It's, I, I've always just Call it Act Two, and I don't really hear anything other than that. Is it so. generally speaking, 
so act one is the intro, which is kind of a setup. And then is it fair to say that act two uh, teases the story more that the, that it develops yeah, the plot a little exactly. more? And if it's like an action type movie, that's where you're going to start seeing the, the scenes are going to speed up. You know, you, like if you were, if you were to watch these things on mute, you could almost tell what was going on because the intro is going to have these kind of long panning scenes and that sort of thing. And then, Act two is going to kick in, and you're going to see faster screen changes uh, that um, kind of introduce the action coming up in the film. Um, uh, you know, it's not going to get huge yet. There's not going to be big fight scenes and stuff typically, but it is going to. Maybe you're going to start in with some of the car chases or some of the kind of more intense moments, kind of uh, building that kind of thrill. Um, those are the types of scenes you're going to have in, in that act too. And it's generally pretty short too. It's usually like 30 or 40 seconds. And, and what about, uh, act three? So yeah, act three is like the explosion, right? So act two is going to be build, 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 um, all the way up until act three. And generally again, it's kind of handy to have a stop before going into act three. Um, and then act three comes in nice and big and bold. That's where you're, uh, if it's if it's like an adventure trailer, it's going to have a little more of that thematic music to it. Um, if it's an action trailer, that's where all your giant hits and sound effects are going to be coming in, really kind of heart-pounding, in-your-face kind of stuff. Um, and that's going to continue all the way through Act 3, which is usually twice as long as Act 2. And by the end of Act 3, you want to be twice as big and in-your-face as when you started Act 3. So it's it's kind of one of those things you always got to build, build, build. Um, and that's one mistake I hear all the time is everyone comes in super strong on Act 3, but then they don't leave themselves anywhere to go. So by the time Act 3 ends, you're kind of bored with it. Wow. Good. Great information. Um, and, and why are they now most of the time including a fourth act, which seems to be something... You know, just of the last few years, and it's definitely gained a head of steam in the last two <laughs> years in particular. Um, right, yeah. What, what is the purpose of what you're doing musically in the fourth act? Yeah, so the, the fourth act is usually kind of, kind of like a, you know, we used to just go into that little stinger ending after act three. Um, but now it's like they, they build, build, build through act three, and then they want a breakdown, like a stop. Usually that's when you have like a, a joke or something if it's one of those comedy action movies. And then they come back in. They want to come back in just with like those really fast like one, two second video shots that are just like one after the other right in your face. You can hardly tell what's going on because all the scenes are flashing by so fast. And they let that go for just like maybe six to 10 or 15 seconds tops, right? Yeah. It's just this really fast, really loud final kind of crescendo and um again you kind of made act three super loud and powerful you got to have something new to add to act four in order to make it even louder and more in your face <laughs> but it doesn't need to be as musical so a lot of times you know if you've done some big theme through through act three you may just like do some rhythm with the final note of act three it doesn't need to be anything special you don't need to repeat a theme or anything. It's just kind of like a in-your-face pounding single note kind of hmm. thing. So do you usually get the video um, and you score to picture, or are you creating music in the blind, kind of knowing <laughs> what, what their typical way the trailers lay out in, in the three or four acts and the timings, and you do that, and then if they pick your music, they get back to you and tell you how they'd like you to fix it to suit their purpose? Yeah, it, it's. I would say never get the video is, is more likely. Wow. I've, I've one time gotten a clip of video because it was such weird timing and everything that they wanted matched. But, yeah, normally it's, hey, we've, we're doing this trailer for this movie, and we need music that is like this <laughs> Got it. and they'll give you like maybe a couple of references but it's usually we want this but we want it to be more like xyz and we don't like this part of it and we don't like this but we do like this <laughs> <laughs> sounds yeah. like advertising agencies which i know trailer houses are uh, yeah exactly right <laughs> i fear and, you know and then yeah 
I, I don't think they usually know exactly what they want. So they just kind of throw a big net out there with a yeah. whole bunch of descriptions and see what comes back. After I was done making records, did like 10 years working on record stuff, uh, semi-retired to doing audio post-production, mostly on TV commercials at probably the preeminent facility anywhere in the world, which happened to be in New York City, and worked with really big ad agencies on really big products all the time. And I got to say, the people were lovely from the ad agencies. I really liked a lot of them. They were very creative, very talented people. But when it came to audio they really didn't know you know i mean right. especially like adding music to stuff whatever they personally liked or whatever their kids played for them you know there were all those influences outside influences that kind of misguided them on their music choices and right. i would try and guide them in the right direction by pulling music out of uh, libraries and uh, playing them stuff and it was always amazing to me how they would say, well, yeah, I like that, but could you make it do something like this? It was always like a positive comment followed by something that took it totally out of what they were actually listening to. It's like, yeah, I love that right. big, big bombastic thing. Do you have anything like with an oboe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. And you know what? Honestly, I think it really speaks to the, the quality of your publisher when because they kind of act as the filter to all of that and manage to trim down the, the, the wide net that the music soup asked for, uh, they trim that down and give you a brief that actually makes sense. And if, if they did their job well, it makes uh, your job composing a lot easier. And then, uh, you know, in return, they can communicate that back to the music soup and hopefully get you your placement. And they earn every penny of the money they make <laughs> by, by being that intermediary, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right, I want to touch on something which amazes me. Um, I've gotten to know Randon pretty well over the last couple of years and know about his work habits and, his, you know, to an extent, his family life. And he starts work every day at 4.30 in the morning, which is unbelievable and admirable, um, so that he can get a certain amount of work done before the rest of the family is up and, you know, around the house drinking their coffee, eating their cereal, what have you. Um, so not only does he have that work, I think he's got a full-time job. Um, and also he and a partner, is it one partner or two? Uh, uh, two. Yep. So two partners, they've actually created some music software that is specifically for making trailers. And I don't want to talk about it much today. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to mention it today. Um, first of all, give them, what's the name of the company and the website where they can check it out over the weekend? Right. Um, yeah, it's fallout music group. And that's actually the website, too, just falloutmusicgroup.com. All right. And uh, what are the names of the two? You have two or three products that are out there? Um, so there's three. One, um, the first one we did last year was the one I just did really quickly to have ready to give to everybody at the convention last year, uh -huh. um, at the rally. That's Trailer Drops. Um, and then we followed that up with Trailer Brahms, which is just your big, loud, you know, everybody wants Brahms in their trailer. Yeah, uh, uh, give, uh, and can you hum a, a, a Bram for us so they know what you're talking about? Can I can I hum one? Well, yeah, you know. I, I oh, mean, sure. You know, a Bram is just your. Duh. You have one in most trailers. We can it. thank Hans Zimmer for that from his Inception soundtrack, right? <laughs> yeah, which was arguably one of the best soundtracks ever. I think it, it really is fantastic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we have the trailer Brahms, which is live brass and synths, and then we have um, our newest one, which we just released, uh, Ascendance, which is a crazy cool riser building tool. Awesome. Uh, explain to folks who may not know what a riser is. Okay, so a riser is basically any long noise that changes in volume and gets louder and louder and usually pitch as well it usually climbs up oh so it was like um, my first wife what's that i said it was it's like my first wife <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> yes exactly you were married to a riser <laughs> um but yeah that you know they're all over trailers they run uh in every act of a trailer there's usually multiple risers going on, sometimes overlapping one another to help build that tension or, or that excitement. 
Um, so, you know, composers, trailer composers especially, are always looking for unique risers so that they don't have the same ones that everyone else is using. So that's that's um, that's what risers are. Just and you know, I use them a lot in TV scores as well, or uh, not scores, TV um, underscores as well. Any kind of tension scores and things like that, uh, cues. Um, I always use risers. Sometimes loud, sometimes subtle, but they're they're everywhere. You know, uh, as I've mentioned on the show several times already, and I'm going to keep mentioning it because I want everybody to get in on this, which is we did some proactive outreach prior to everybody being sent home, and now it's starting to happen on its own where companies, both publishers, music supervisors, pretty much everybody in the industry is anticipating the day when this whole thing is over. I think we all are anticipating that day with great hope. And there are going to be all kinds of TV shows and Hallmark uh, Channel movies and Lifetime Channel movies and stuff on the the History Channel and sci-fi and news broadcasts in 2020, if that's even still on the air. You get the idea. Um, And all that stuff is going to need music. It's going to need score. It's going to need underscore. It's going to need songs. So it sounds like um, a lot of the elements that you've got in your software is going to be very handy for creating those as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. I, I, I use them all the time for um, all sorts of music projects. So, yeah, definitely very useful and very inexpensive. All right. Well, I like the inexpensive part. I, I've heard the stuff. I, you know, I watched the videos. Um, what should if they want to see a demonstrate? You know what? I'm not going to tell them where to see a demonstrate. Well, they probably can on the site, but um, <laughs> Randon's actually going to be live in his studio demonstrating this stuff for us uh, during Monday's show. But in anticipation, just to learn more about what the stuff is so you can get a feel for how you might be able to use it for all these drone things that are going to be coming up, um, what's the website? One more time, please. Uh, Falloutmusicgroup.com. All right. So check the stuff out this weekend, you guys. Um, And Randon has agreed to give away to one of our lucky viewers on Monday during the live show. Uh, is going to win probably any one of the three, the software of your choice from the site. So don't miss the episode. You've got to be live in the chat room in order to win. And um, that's about it for me. Uh, I don't want to take too much of your time, but I sure appreciate you joining us for today's uh, quarantine happy hour. Yeah, I appreciate it. And uh, look forward to uh, seeing you for real on Monday and uh, please tell your family I send my best and everybody stay healthy and stay safe. All right. You as well. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Randon. Talk to you Monday. All right. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. That was cool. Love that guy. He is so incredibly inspiring. Uh, I've got to say virtually every single one of our successful taxi members, a lot of people think it's luck in the music industry. I think people make their own luck. Um, Persistence and hard work wins. And, you know, if I go down my mental checklist of taxi members that are successful, whether it's songs or instrumental stuff or both, um, they all find the time. They all make the time to create their music, to keep working on their craft. They've all learned how to develop thick skin because they understand that every failure just gets them one step closer to success. They've all taken the time to learn how the industry operates so that when somebody presents them with a contract for something, they don't freak out. Um, We actually have many, many examples over the years of taxi members being offered deals and they didn't even respond to the person offering them the deal. And when I reached out to the members and said, why? You've been waiting for this your whole life. Why, why, why are you not responding? Uh, I'm afraid. I'm afraid they're going to try and rip me off or screw me somehow. Uh, uh, Anyway, all of our members who are successful have all gotten past that. They know what a typical music library deal is. They know what a typical um, range of dollars for certain types of placements would be. They know the right questions to ask of their fellow members in the chat room of our forum, which is at forums with an S, forums.taxi.com. You can go into the general section and just ask any questions. You can go into the biz talk section and say, hey, I was presented with a contract from a library. Don't mention the library's name, otherwise you're going to cause a swarm of people. There we go. Swarm of people running over there. 
um, also trying to jump on uh, the bandwagon. But you can say, look, I was offered a, a library deal, and uh, these are some of the terms that I was offered. Are, are they typical? And you'll get answers from people like Dean Crepain, who's in the chat room somewhere, that will um, give you, you know, their 10 or 20 years of wisdom in dealing with this stuff. Um, it's just great. Anyway, all the successful members, number one, understand the work ethic. Number two, understand that you are making music that solves a problem or fills a need for the buyers. Um, and you are also going to meet people and should learn what they have learned about how the industry operates, what the norms are, um, the timelines, um, things that you need to do to be perceived as a professional. All of those things go into the success formula. So that's it. Um, oh, I know what I wanted to ask you guys. Yesterday during the uh, Quarantini Happy Hour show, uh, towards the end of the show, several of you were talking about doing some sort of group collaboration uh, where several of you get together and create a song or an instrumental piece, whatever. Um, and I recommended, or maybe somebody in the chat recommended going and picking a uh, taxi listing and using that as your starting point. So I want to know, did uh, you guys hang out in the chat after the show? Um, were you able to somehow get together? Um, if you want, you could create a topic on uh, the taxi forum uh, looking for group collaborators. Anyway, uh, didn't I give you guys a deadline? Do you remember? Did I give you a deadline? Because if you guys come up with something, I will be happy to play it on one of the Quarantini Happy Hour shows. Brad Gray says, yes, we did. Brad says he hasn't set anything up yet, but he will. Um, and George Georgia says, yes, uh, I gave a deadline of next week. Did I say when next week? Because that sounds a little amorphous. Eh, next week. <laughs> Brad Gray says he'll organize it after he's done a beer or two. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah, go into the forum, create a, a thread there, and everybody else should go to the forum as well so you can become part of that thread. Um, I, I'm really anxious to hear what you guys come up with. Um, I find it funny that I saw Adriana Lisette in the chat room before. Um, Adriana and her family actually live about a mile and a half from me, maybe two miles away. Um, and, uh, yeah, we rarely see each other. She was kind enough to bring her daughter who I adore to uh, the office one day. Her, her daughter, Elena watches taxi TV with her every now and then. And, uh, uh <laughs> Adriana brought her daughter over and I had her sit in my chair at the desk. Uh, like, you know, she was on taxi TV. Apparently it was an exciting moment for her. So I'm really glad to, uh, it's like, uh, the Make My Wish Foundation at Taxi. So, uh, Elena, I'm glad I could make your wish come true. I think you need to raise your bar a little bit on what <laughs> what you wish for, because if I'm it and Taxi TV is it, you may need to raise your bar. Be an astronaut. Be president of the United States. Um, come up with a vaccine for COVID-19. Think big. Uh, any questions from you guys? We've got 15 minutes left, bef left before we wrap this up for the weekend. And while I'm waiting for those questions to come up, once again, I want to ask anybody who has not subscribed our YouTube channel, go hit the subscribe thing right now. Um, or actually, when the show's over, by the way, it usually takes them about five minutes or so to get the video up online of today's show. It needs time to um, format stuff. And... Uh, after you do that, after that's up there, give us a like, subscribe, and definitely click that little bell, the alert button, which is up in... I can never... Right there, up in that corner. <laughs> it's so hard doing things in reverse. I can't even do them frontwise. Uh, and, and click the alert so that you're notified when we go live with the shows. Um, Playlist bot says, I'm going back in my box. Bye-bye. Um, any questions from you guys? Hmm. 
no questions. Okay. Well, if I don't see a question pop up in the next like 45 seconds, I may actually end today's show a little early because I've got a ton of work to do and I definitely do not want to work tonight. Last week, I worked a crazy amount of hours. I worked all last weekend. This weekend, the only thing I want to work on is getting our next interview set up for the taxi transmitter, um, picking the person for our next passenger profile, writing questions for them, writing questions for the show on Monday with Randon. Um, and then I've got to go out and back in my backyard. We Gophers have overtaken the hillside in our backyard and now they're coming up to the grassy area and just, I mean, seriously, if you ever seen one of those world war one movies, like after a battlefield has been all bombed out and it's just like craters and mounds of dirt everywhere. That's what the hillside looks like from the gophers. I do have coyotes that are coming over the six foot wall and, and eating the gophers, but apparently they're not hungry enough to eat them all. Question from Anthony Franz. Do you think pro tools stock synth sounds are good enough for today? Um, honestly, I don't have Pro Tools. Uh, I hear a lot of stuff done with Pro Tools, obviously. Um, somebody else should answer this, but I will give you my answer, which is um, you will know yourself when you listen to the best music that's out there and compare the two. Uh, and I'm sure, like everything else, there are probably some unbelievably great sounds in there. There's probably some stuff that's very old, been laying around there for a long time that's yesterday's news and sounds a little dated so you know what you will know if you pay special attention to the music that is currently out there in the genre that you want to be competitive in that's your bar that's where you need to have stuff that sounds as good as that or better i call it the 15 percent rule you always want to try and change things up um, by 15%. If you do 50%, it's too much. It'll turn listeners off. If you don't do anything, by the time you get it out there, it'll be yesterday's news. So push the envelope forward by 15%. Um, I think I saw something go by from Peter Rahill. I did. Uh, oh, Peter Rahill wants to know what my definition of top lining is. Melody and lyric. The basic the two basic elements of a song, right? Uh, one of our members, Callie J, um, has become an in-demand top liner. She's really, really talented. Um, oh gosh, I can't think of the song title. Ariana, can you think of the song title, the one that I love of Callie J's and post it in the chat because I would love everybody to go check it out after the show today. Um, Anyway, uh, uh, and top lining, you know, Amanda says it, it's obvious melody and lyrics written to an already produced bed track. It could be that you write the top line in advance and somebody else creates a track around it too. It can go both ways. Um, Glenn Letts wants to know, topic for discussion. When people collaborate, do they, uh, do they go through the step of creating copyright and publishing splits and work for hire agreements. They should. I can't say that everybody is that responsible, but they absolutely should. Typically, I can't say it's true 100% of the time, but I would say it's almost always true, which is uh, publishing splits are usually equal splits. If there are three people on a collab, it's split three ways at 33 and a third. If it's two people, it's 50-50. It's five people, it's 20% each. That's generally the way it's done in Nashville, even though you know there could be four people in the room. And as I've mentioned before, uh, maybe the fourth person didn't have any good ideas and did nothing but, hey, can I grab you a beer or a coffee throughout the entire you know, three-hour writing session? They still get 20 uh, or 25% of, how many people did I say were in that room for? So they would get 25% because they're there that day. Maybe on another day that they come up with the killer hook that the song is written around, and somebody else doesn't contribute. So it all balances out in the wash. Um, as far as work for hire agreements, absolutely. The last thing you want is for a piece of yours to land in something really juicy. Let's say you have a song that ends up in a major motion picture and somebody who played a bass part on that song four years ago happens to go to the movie theater 
um, hear that song, go, oh my gosh, there's that song I played on. But my bass line is integral to the song. The song, you know, wouldn't be what it is without my bass part. Uh, I should have a writer credit on that. And then they come after you for a piece of the copyright, a piece of the master because they played bass. Whereas if they sign a, a simple work for hire agreement that just basically says on this date, at this time, I played bass on this song, um, was compensated with X amount of dollars and have no further claims to copyright or master ownership. That is enough. Um, by the way, you can find actual work for hire agreements online, plenty of them. Um, I saw somebody mentioned uh, one of the music attorneys that we actually really like, a woman named Erin Jacobson at themusicindustrylawyer.com, I believe is her website. Um, she's got another site that that will send you to where she's got a bunch of sample agreements, um, some of which might be for free, many of which um, can be purchased um, and you can use them as templates. Um, much cheaper than paying 500 bucks an hour for an attorney to create one from scratch. Uh, let's see. Thanks for making this accessible for Europeans, Michael. This is a big thing in the current climate, a moment of consistency in tough times. Yeah, I want to stay consistent and keep doing this, but you know, if the numbers keep getting smaller because people are like, yeah, I'll check it out later. Um, you know, I don't want to be doing these shows every day. It is a time suck for me, although I don't do a lot of prep work for them. Um, it's tough for me to give up an hour of my work day. But for you dudes and dudettes, I'm very happy to do it. Like I said, when I first launched this thing, we all need a friend right now. And some of us are home alone, like me. Um, and, you know, even people who are home with their families, um, their families may not be musical. They may not understand your world. So this is a place for us to come together and hang out with like-minded people. So I'd like to keep it going. So spread the word. Show up every day. Give me enough people where the sponsors go, here you go. Here's a $200, $300 microphone to give away. Here's some software to give away. I want to give you guys some good free stuff. Speaking of which, um, you know what? Hey, Dean, if you're still watching... Can you uh, send me some of these books? Um, actually, can you send them to my house? I'll email you my address um, so that... You know what? Send them to the office. Never mind. Just send them to the address you normally send them. Um, look, I'm a fish. Anyway, send me some of these books because I'm going to give some away. Um, people absolutely have to read these. And oh, let's give away... This one, Demystifying the Q. Um, like I said, it's a must read. So anybody who puts a comment in the uh, comment section underneath today's video, once it shows up um, on YouTube after the show, um, we will pick the best comment and that person will get a book sent to them when we are allowed to leave our homes and go back to our office. How's that? Um, like I said, don't forget to uh, subscribe. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. You can do that. Can they do that right now? I think they can. Um, and that's that. We got six minutes left. Um, Brad Roseboro wants to know, yesterday you talked about signing up for monetizing service with CD Baby, TuneCore, etc. What about SongTrust? How do they work? Honestly, I've heard of SongTrust. Things are so fragmented about how you get paid and what you get paid for now in the digital world. I've, I, I've read so much and tried so hard to understand it all. I'm afraid to give out any information because I will screw it up and I don't want to give you bad information. Best thing you can do about SongTrust is go to their website. Uh, but I don't believe that, the, like CD Baby and TuneCore and DistroKid, they're in the distribution uh, business. They get your music out there to various platforms where it can be downloaded and streamed, and they collect um, revenue for you. They will also collect publishing revenue for you. But as I've mentioned in many previous shows and will continue to mention, even though they are very reputable companies, they're good people, they're reputable companies. However, 
a lot of people see that little area when they're doing the paperwork or filling out the online form about uploading their music and they see something that says, would you like us to monetize your music? Get it used, uh, you know, get it placed in videos on YouTube and what have you and uh, uh, collect money for you. And people go, hell yeah. And they check the box without reading the fine print. What they don't realize is by checking that box and clicking the OK button at the end of that form, they have entered into a publishing agreement. So the music you have online that you got out there through CD Baby, DistroKid, TuneCore, whatever services you use, if you check that box five years ago, three months ago, yesterday, you have entered into a publishing agreement. They're all a little different, so you need to go back and read what you signed and understand that you can't take that music even if you signed a non-exclusive publishing agreement with them, you can't submit that for an exclusive publishing agreement. If you signed an exclusive or a non-exclusive and on your own or through taxi or some other way, you get your song in a TV show and there's a $3,500 sync fee for that. Um, they get half of that. Be even though they had nothing to do with it, they're going to get half of the, the revenue because you signed a publishing agreement. They are your publisher. It may vary depending on what kind of agreement you signed, but most of the time, you're by legal right. They're going to or they're going to have a legal right to half that money. So think about it before you click that box. You can use them to distribute your music without having to do that. Um, Song Trust is a publishing administrator. They take 15%, but my BMI show, info shows them with 100% of the publisher's share. Uh, they say you keep all the rights, though. I've asked them, but no reply. Um, all right. We are just about at the end of today's show. Um, please tell your friends about this. Please join us on Monday. Randon Purcell is very articulate, as you could probably see on the phone call. And he will do such a great job of really, really um, introducing you to the trailer world. And I'm going to ask him that, you know, it's, he does a lot of like action trailers and big bombastic, um, you know, trailers like for Transformers kind of stuff, you know. Um, yes, Monday is at the same time, which is two hours later. Sorry, Amanda. Um but, you know, there are different kinds of trailers. What if it's a trailer about, like, First Love, a little independent movie uh, about First Love? Uh, the trailer for that is not going to be a big orchestral uh, electro-hybrid thing with taiko drums and, you know, rises and drops and explosions, none of that stuff. Uh, that's going to probably be, you know, like some solo piano or delicate singer-songwriter stuff or maybe... Um, you know, a string quartet. I mean, there are so many different types of trailers and so many different types of music that work in those different types of trailers. So I, I want to talk to um, Randon about that stuff on Monday as well. So with that, I bid you guys a great weekend. Thank you so much for joining us all week long for these. Um, I hope you're enjoying them. Hope you're getting stuff out of them. Hope to continue doing them. Don't forget, subscribe, like us, click the alert bell, tell your friends and family, and where's the band? There's the band. We will see you guys on Monday for an exciting episode of Taxi TV Live. Bye, you guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.